Hello Crafty family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY projects, I have selected my top 10 DIYs where I have transformed the gift boxes available throughout the year from Dollar Tree into high-end home decor. Now these include a variety of planters, some organization shelves, and tiered and single trays. Now this compilation will have step-by-step -step instructions for each project and also styling ideas that I have used for my space. Now, as always, all of the projects I create have complete supply lists included in the description box so you can easily use it for reference as you gather your supplies. Now, before we start, I have to say hey, hey to all of my subscribers. And if you are a new visitor to my channel today, I hope you consider subscribing as well and stick around to enjoy all of these crafts and the different ways I will show you how to style these in your space. So now let's just jump right into these projects. Now for this project, you're gonna need two of these round gift boxes from the Dollar Tree. And the Dollar Tree usually has a nice assortment of gift boxes on hand year round for all seasons, so you can select from any of the gift boxes that they have. You'll also need two 7 16 dowels from Walmart, and I got these for 97 cents each. So what we're gonna start off doing is taking our gift boxes and removing the lids, placing them to the side. Now for the boxes, we are gonna apply a layer of primer and I'm gonna use my Zinser 123 primer and apply a couple of coats, letting them thoroughly dry. So now that they're dry, we can apply our final coat. Now for my final coat, I chose to use this Apple Barrel white acrylic paint, but you can use any paint that you like. So I'm just gonna squeeze a little inside the container and I am going to apply one nice even coat all on the inside and the outside of my containers. And you wanna make sure you do this for both of those. And once they're fully coated, they can sit outside to completely dry. So while they dry, we can start working on our dowels and I wanted my planters to have two different levels. So I'm gonna cut these down to size. So I cut four pieces down to six and a half inches and four pieces down to nine inches. So I decided I wanted to go ahead and paint my dowels. You can certainly leave them natural or stain them, but I decided to paint them with black acrylic. So I'm just gonna apply one or two coats of the black acrylic paint to each one of the wood dowels, and you do wanna make sure you get those ends as well. And here are all of my dowels painted and just let these completely dry. So now that my containers are dry, we could start marking them in quarters. So the containers naturally have a paper seam that you can kind of see through the paint. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start there by plenty, placing a piece of painter's tape at that location. And then on the opposite side, right above it, I'm gonna place another piece of painter's tape and this will mark the half mark. And so now we're gonna mark the quarter mark on the side. So we're gonna place another piece of tape on each side of the containers to divide it completely into quarters. Now the purpose of this tape is to mark where all of our dowel rod feet will be placed on our containers. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to mark the container an inch down from the top. Now this one inch mark will indicate where the top of the dowel rod will be placed when we add them to the containers. We wanna repeat this all the way around this container and that second one. Now once those containers are marked, I'm just gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna line it up with each one of those mark and marks and make a straight line down. Now what this line does is help us align our dowel when we get ready to adhere it to the container. So now my dowel rods are nice and dry and we can start to adhere them to our containers. So to adhere these, I'm just gonna use my hot glue gun in a high temperature and I'm using my wood stick sure bonder glue sticks. So just apply a nice thick line of that hot glue and place that dowel in place carefully, making sure you align it with all of your markings. 
Now you wanna repeat this all the way around your container, placing it in place and making adjustments while the glue is still warm. And you can also use your carpenter square to make sure that each one of your dowels is nice and straight. And that way you can prevent your container from being wobbly in the end. So here is my container with all of the legs applied and we just wanna repeat this for your second container. And there we go. All of our containers have their legs, they're dry, so just remove the tape and now you can decorate them. And here are my two planters on display and I am so thrilled about how they turned out. Now I chose to place some eucalyptus bunches in my containers and I picked these up from Walmart. Now I love that these look so high end and the containers really look like they are ceramic. Let me know in the comments what you think of this project. Now what I'm gonna do is use the lids of those containers from our first project, and I'm also gonna use a pack of tumbling tower blocks in a 72 count box. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to take my black acrylic paint, and I wanna paint the inside of my lids. I just squirt a little bit of paint in there and spread it around and shared it between the two containers. And you do wanna make sure both of them have a really nice thick coat, including the edges. Now, once those are dry, we wanna protect this finish. So I'm gonna be using some matte Mod Podge and I picked up this bottle from the Dollar Tree. You can just place some inside of the lid and then spread it around evenly. You wanna make sure you do get the sides and that top edge as well. And this will prevent any chipping of your finish. And then once that first lid is done, you wanna do this for the second lid as well. Now while those are drying, we are going to work on our blocks. And what I did with my blocks is I went ahead and pre-stained those with my Jacobian Memwax stain. And so they're ready to go for the project. So now that our lids are all dry, what we're gonna do is trim these out with those blocks. Now to apply these, I'm gonna use my Sure Bonder hot glue gun in a high setting with my wood stick glue sticks. And I'm just gonna apply a generous dot of that hot glue on each one of the blocks and apply it around the bottom of, uh, around the bottom edge of the container. Now it's a good idea to work on a flat surface when applying these so you can press them into place and they're all going to be even. Now you wanna continue this all around the container and I like to leave a gap open at the back and then grab a handful of extra blocks just to see if I'll have enough to finish it off before I keep going. And it looks like everything turned out perfect. So I just continued to add all my blocks until they were all done. Now, as you notice, the tops of my blocks have not been stained. So all you have to do is go back in with your stain and stain the tops. And now all you have to do is repeat the process for the second lid. And here are both containers all done and stained. So now what I wanna do is cover up the bottom. You guys know I love a finished look on all of my projects. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a generous layer of that hot glue around the edge and around the middle of that box lid and press it right down on this black foam sheet that I had left over. And once those are nice and glued on, I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife and I'm just gonna go around the edge of each one of those containers and trim off all of the excess. And so here is one of the containers all cleaned up and ready to go and the bottom is nice and clean. And now both containers are ready. So now all you have to do is decorate your containers in your desired space. So here are both of my containers all decked out with a few of my favorite Dollar Tree items on display. Now I think that these are a great size to decorate with and they do allow you to show off some of your trinkets. And I think these stain blocks are always a winner and they look really great in this project. Now there are so many ways that you can decorate these trays and display them. How about a tiered tray? Now just add a candle holder and some blocks for the base for your desired height. 
and then all you have to do is decorate it as you wish. Now you could even decorate this for changing seasons. Now Easter will be here soon. So what I did is I added some cute stuffed bunnies and decorated eggs to the trays. I think that this is really adorable and interchangeable. Now I will be sure to link the pattern for the little stuffed bunnies in the description box below too. Now, if you want to go with a nice, cozy, neutral look, how about adding some candles and decorative jars to your trays? And then you can display them at different levels, and I think this is so appealing to the eye. Now for this project, you're gonna need three or four of these large cardboard boxes from the Dollar Tree. And you're gonna need four pieces of wood for the supports. And this is cut from one of the one by two by eight pieces from the Home Depot, and it was $1.18 total. Now as an alternative, you can also use these wood plunger handles from the Dollar Tree for a dollar each. Now the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to take all of our boxes and we wanna remove all of those lids and sit those to the side. And what I'm gonna do is take the Zinser 123 primer and I am gonna put a layer of this primer on the inside and the outside of all of the boxes. And here are the boxes once the primer has been applied and they're all dried. So now we're going to paint our final coat on the boxes and I chose to use this white apple barrel paint to paint the boxes for their final coat. Now all I'm going to do is just squirt some on the inside and then I'm going to spread it evenly and you want to make sure you do a nice even opaque coat on that inside and make sure you get around the edges as well. And of course, once you're done with the inside, when it dries, go ahead and flip it over and do the outsides as well. Now while that dries, I'm gonna grab all of my handles. Now I have here the plunger handles and I also have my wood cuts. Now as you can see, the plunger handles are quite shorter than my wood cuts and the plunger handles are 17 inches. Now I would suggest that you use only three bins for the plunger handles and you can use four of the bins for the Home Depot handles which are cut at about 23 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and paint my sticks that I'm going to be using and what I'm going to do is use again this white acrylic paint by Apple Barrel. Now you can certainly stain these if you like but I just want to paint them white to match the bins on the finish for my rag. Now just apply that acrylic paint on all of the sides including the ends of your piece. And once they're all painted just sit them to the side to dry. So now that everything is dry, go ahead and lay out that grid mat and I'm gonna grab one of my sticks that I'm gonna be using and all of my dried bins. Now what I wanna do is I wanna space my bins evenly along this stick just to make sure that they will be nice and even. And you wanna leave about an inch of the bottom for the foot and mine ended up being about six and a half inches apart. And then what I'm gonna do is, is sit that stick up on the side and I'm gonna take a pencil and I want to make a marking on that stick at the bottom and top of each one of the bins to make sure that the placement is noted. And then grab your other three sticks. You wanna stack them all up and put your marked stick in there as well. You wanna even up all of those edges and what you're gonna do is take a ruler and transfer those markings to the other sticks. Now this will make sure that the marking is even on each stick and when it's all assembled, everything will be nice and level.
So the next thing we're going to do is take our dried uh, container bins and I'm going to be using this black acrylic paint to give them like an aged enamel chipping feature. And all I'm going to do is take a fine uh, paintbrush and I'm just going to drag it along the side bottom edge of that bin. I find like just randomly marking gives it the most authentic look and you want to do this along the bottom edge and also those side corners. Now once this is done all the way around the outside, this is what it will look like. Now once that's dry, we're going to go ahead and apply a layer around that top ledge as well. And here's what it will look like when it's done. Just repeat this for those other three bins. And here are all of my bins complete and ready to go. So now we can finally start to assemble our rack. So I have my grid mat down just to make sure everything is laid out nice and even. And what I want to do is space those two wood pieces apart the width of one of the short sides of the bin. So once it matches, go ahead and tape that down with a little bit of painter's tape. And this will make sure that the sticks stay nice and even when you apply your first bin. Believe me, you do not want to skip this step. So here you go, I'm checking it here to make sure everything is nice and even. And then what I'm gonna do is I want to apply my bins with little screws. So I wanna put two screws on each side. So I'm putting a screw mark a hole on each side with a little pencil. So I'll do two dots on each side. And then for the screws that we'll be using, I'm using these one half inch wood screws. Now I believe you can get this in a 20 pack at Walmart for like 97 cents. So before I apply the bin, what I wanna do is take each one of those half inch screws and I wanna to start to thread it into the hole just barely that it pokes out the other side. You don't wanna do it all the way through because it'll create a gap, but we just wanna thread it through so it sticks into the side of the box. And then to apply it, we wanna make sure we line up the bin along those lines. So to temporarily hold it in place, I'm putting just a small line of hot glue and I'm gonna stick that bin right in place along those lines that we made. And then I'm gonna take a screwdriver and then I'm just gonna hand screw these in. These are so short and they take very little effort. However, if you do have a ratcheting screwdriver, it does save a little bit of time. So now that all screws are nice and secure, we can go ahead and remove all of that tape holding those side pieces into place. And now we can see that one of the sides is completely installed. So now we're gonna take our other side of the rack and we wanna do the same thing by aligning the side of the bin with the sticks to make sure they're evenly spaced apart. And we're applying our screws into the side of the bin as shown here. Now we do want to make sure we tape these sides down as well because we want these to be even. And then we're going to lay the side of the bin right on top and we want to make sure that it's even with the lines. Now I'm using another bin on the opposite side just to make sure that those legs don't flap around while you're applying them in place. So just go ahead and put a dab of hot glue into place just like we did the first time and then stick the side of the bin right onto those side supports. And then once you do that, of course, you do want to take your screwdriver and screw those four screws into the side. So then you're gonna remove the tape that's securing everything into place and you'll see that your first bin is nice and secure. Now I'm just gonna double check here to make sure everything is even and my level says we are good to go. So now what we're gonna do is take that second bin, which I've already started to put those screws in just to have it ready. And I'm gonna sit it into place and I'm gonna align it with your second set of lines. Go ahead and take your hot glue gun, put a little dollop of hot glue on there and sit that bin into place. Then after that, just screw it in, flip it over, and you just wanna repeat this on the other side. Now 
Now, once that hot glue is secured into place, go ahead and just screw in all four sides with your screwdriver. And as you can see, there we go. We have our second level and we're checking it and it's good to go. Now, all we're gonna do from here is we're gonna repeat this process for the last two bins, the same process. So now all four of our bins are into place. They are nice and secure with those screws. So now we can go in and just go ahead and erase any kind of pencil marks that we made. This acrylic paint makes it very easy to erase any marks. So we're just erasing all of our marks on the side of our rack. So now I'm gonna kinda choose my favorite side to put some labels on to display. And the labels that I'm planning to use, I'm gonna put right down the center of the rack. And I plan on using these labels that I got from the Dollar Tree. They come in three different styles in a pack. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna choose to see which one actually looks the best on here. I really wanted to keep it simple. Um, so I chose to go with the square one. So I'm just gonna place one of the square labels in the center of each one of your bins. Now, if you don't want to have the labels, this is completely optional, but they do peel off fairly easily. Now, to number my labels, I went to my computer and printed out these number labels using the AR Julian font in the size 72, and I printed it out on mailing label paper, but you can use regular printer paper and apply these with a glue stick if you like, but I thought it gave uh, a really authentic kind of farmhouse look. I've seen these numbered bins and I love them so much, so I thought I would incorporate that into my project today. Now for the other side, I decided to give it a little different look just in case I wanted to switch it around. So what I did is grab some of these old brass looking handles that I took off a dresser that I rehabbed a while back and I'm just gonna apply these to the fronts of each bin. Now I did originally decide to paint these black but I thought the contrast with the brass and the white really looked kind of you know, farmhousey to me, I really loved it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply these with hot glue um, since they're not gonna be functional, they're just for decoration. So I just apply these with hot glue into place, let them completely dry and they are nice and secure. So now all we have to do is decorate our rack and here it is you guys. I can't tell you this thing turned out so great and I really loved how it how it looks in the farmhouse type of look now I love how the number labels turned out I mean it you can label them with a name if you like but I thought the one two three four was pretty basic and it actually looks great now with the handles, that does give it a unique look. You can put any kind of handle that you want and it really will make it shine. So now all you have to do is decorate and I just put a couple of different florals and, and bowls of fruit and kind of farmhousey type of things on one side of the rack. I thought that that really looked kind of cute. Or for functional, you can use it for your craft supplies, ribbons, paints, beads, whatever you like. There's lots of room in these bins and so you can definitely use it for something that you love. This project will start with the three round gift boxes from the Dollar Tree. We'll need some large craft sticks from Lowe's for 98 cents and we'll only need one pack. We'll need some red and black fabric or paper, scrapbook paper. And then we're gonna start with taking the lids off of our containers and protect your work surface because we are going to be sanding down glitter. Now, if yours doesn't have glitter, you could skip this step. Then we're gonna take this nutmeg brown acrylic paint and I'm just gonna put a light coat on the lids. And this is just to dull down the design in case it can be seen between the craft sticks. And then you wanna take all of your containers and we are gonna paint the inside of those black. You just wanna evenly apply one generous coat of paint almost to the top of the container. And then once that is applied, you wanna let them dry completely. Now you can grab your fabric or your scrapbook paper and you wanna measure a strip to cut down that would have an overlap on the top edge and also on the bottom edge. 
Now you do want the seams to overlap as well. And then what you want to do is grab a container and you want to apply hot glue to that container and apply it to the fabric and just roll it along as you go. Now keep in mind if you do use fabric make sure you get a pretty thin fabric so your lid will still fit on your container. And you just want to continue to apply glue as you wrap the fabric around the containers. Now when you get to the end what you want to do is you want to glue and fold under that raw edge for a nice clean fabric finish. And then apply another strip of hot glue along that edge and seal it to the side of the container. Now go ahead and flip the container over to the bottom and apply hot glue around the bottom edge and press that fabric in, secure it in place. And to give it a finished look, I'm going to use this piece of black foam craft paper and I'm going to hot glue that container right on top. And then all you do is take your X-Acto knife and trim around the edge. You have a nice clean bottom. <laughs> so now we're going to add some hot glue on the inside edge of the container and we're going to press that fabric over to the inside and secure it in place. And here are all three containers all completed. So now we can work on those lids. So grab your large craft sticks and we're gonna start by trimming a flat edge on one of those craft sticks. And then you wanna go ahead and line it up with the edge of the lid and you wanna mark a trim line. Now we're just gonna trim that piece down to size and we are going to hot glue it into place along the edge. Now we are going to be repeating this process all the way around the lid and these sticks are fairly easy to cut and the process goes pretty quickly while watching your favorite TV shows. And now that that rim is complete we can go ahead and cover the top with the sticks. Now we're going to start by just laying one on top and we're going to trace the outline and the edges of the container. And then just take your scissors and trim it down to fit. And if it fits well, go ahead and adhere it into place with hot glue. And you just cover the remainder of the top of the sticks. And here is one of the completed tops. And now we could just complete the remaining two and now all three tops are done and we can move on to staining them. Now I wanted a lighter brown color, so I'm going to be using this Early American Color by Ace. Now you can also use diluted acrylic paint as well. Now I'm just going to apply that stain to each one of the lids. And once they're all stained, just sit them out to completely dry. Now fast forward, now that they're all dried, I wanted to add some of these 50 cent handles I got from the Habitat for Humanity, and I wanted them black, so I spray painted them with satin black spray paint. Now I prefer not to hot glue these on, so I'll be drilling holes for screws in the lids. So I'm gonna take my handle hole template and make sure that my holes are placed evenly, and you can get this template at any hardware store. Now once your holes are verified that they fit, go ahead and drill your two holes for your handle. Now in order to keep the screws from pulling through that hole, I'm also adding large washer to keep them in place. And now we can secure the screws through the lid to the handles. And now that it's nice and secure, we can repeat this with the other two lids. So now grab those containers and we can add those fancy lids to those containers and complete the project.
and check out how awesome these containers turned out. Oh my goodness, I'm so in love with these. Now this is the perfect place to place your wrapped snacks and goodies for your guests. And I think the wood on top is the perfect touch to create a high-end look, but you can also use the wood grain contact paper if you prefer. No, no matter how you use these, they will be beautiful on display. Now to make these, I'm going to be using these tall gift boxes left over from Christmas that I got from the Dollar Tree. And I'll be using four packs of 98 cent paint sticks from Lowe's. So the first thing we're going to do is grab one of those boxes, remove the lid, and take one of the paint sticks to measure how long we're going to need to cut them. So I'm going to go ahead and mark where the cut line will be, which is level at the top of the box. And then I'm just going to compare this marking to the remainder of the packages. So I'm going to remove 16 of the sticks because that's how many we'll need to cover one box. Go ahead and level one of the edges of those sticks and then tape them all together so they won't shift out of place. And then take the stick with the measurements and then you're going to butt it up to the other bunch. And what we're going to end up doing is we're going to be transferring that cut mark to um, the other bundle. So both bundles will be marked with that cut line. So now we're just going to take this out, cut that edge off. And as you could see, I did cut it, but I left about an eighth of an inch longer because I want my stick to slightly stick right above the edge of the container. So now we're going to prepare to add these to the container and as you notice one side has the measurements and the other side is blank so you do want to make sure that when you apply these to the container you want to apply them with the measurement side down now four sticks fit perfectly on one side of the box so that's why i calculated 16 for this project now just go ahead and add some of your hot glue to the marked side of your paint stick and apply it to the box as you can see, it sticks slightly up just like we planned. And then you're just going to continue this process with the remainder of your paint sticks. And here is one side fully covered. Everything looks good, so we're just going to continue to do this for the remainder of the box. And now our box is fully covered with our sticks. Now I did notice at the corners um, there was a little gap so I am just going to take some bamboo skewers that I had on hand. You can get these from Walmart for 88 cents or you can get them from the Dollar Tree for a dollar and I want to apply it in that little crack. So I'm just going to apply a little hot glue. I'm going to lay that bamboo skewer right into that little crack and then cut off the end piece. And that resolves that little issue. Now we're just going to complete, complete this for the remainder of the cracks in the box and everything looks nice and secure. Now you just repeat this whole process for the second box and now we have two fully covered boxes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab two of those extra paint sticks and what we're going to do is use these to cover up those little gaps where the handle part of the paint sticks is. So we're going to cut our paint sticks off at nine inches and then cut them in half at four and a half inches and this is how we get four of those sticks. Now four and a half inches is perfect to fit one side of the box. Just apply some hot glue and place it right over those gapped areas. And then you just want to repeat this process around the entire box. And now the all of the gap spaces are covered. Now take two more sticks and repeat this for your second box. And now these are ready to go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to paint the inside and I'm going to be using this black acrylic paint. Now I'm only going to be painting just about two or three inches and I'm using these paper plates I got on clearance for Dollar from Dollar General. They were in Christmas clearance for 30 cents if anybody is interested. That's a super deal if you're just going to use them for painting. So now all we're going to do is paint the inside. I want to go down just about two or three inches um, from the edge because you know we're going to be putting plants in here so we won't need the entire box covered and then we're going to um, 
make sure that everything is covered along that little edge where that red is exposed. So to get to that, we're just gonna use a fine tipped paintbrush and apply more of that black acrylic paint until everything is nice and covered. Then you just repeat this for your second box. So once that is completely dry, we can go ahead and stain our boxes and I'm gonna be using this Jacobian stain by Minwax. Now I'm just gonna take my little rag and I am just going to apply the stain all over the box um, on all of the sides. And I just wanna make sure that there's just one coat, making sure you wipe it clean after you apply your stain. And here is my box fully covered and I noticed there were some gaps. So I'm taking a small tooth, uh, toothbrush. <laughs> I'm taking a small paintbrush and getting in all those little gaps. Now we're gonna repeat this for our second box and both boxes are fully stained and we can sit these out to completely dry. Now once they are dry, we can go ahead and we're gonna cover the bottoms. You guys know I love a finished project. So I have some of this uh, black foam that I have, foam sheet. So I'm just going to apply some hot glue to the bottom of the containers. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna stick that container right on top of that black foam sheet and press it into place. And I'm gonna repeat this for that second container as well. Now once it's fully adhered, go ahead and um, grab your cutting mat and I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife and cut them apart. And what I'm gonna do now is just start trimming off all of that excess foam around the bottom of the container. And now you can see we have a nice finished bottom on our containers. I just think that this looks so clean and professional and it doesn't display any of that retail information. So now we can go ahead and decorate our containers. So I have some of this onion grass that I picked up from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna put two bundles per container. Now in order to fill up all that extra space in the container, I'm just gonna stick some um, old used craft paper down into the container. You can use newspaper or bags and you can also use floral foam to hold the onion grass, but I had a bunch of this styrofoam that I'm just gonna go ahead and repurpose and stick down the con in the container. It's a little messy, but it'll work. Now I'm gonna cover up that foam with a piece of black fabric that I just had left on my t-shirt project and I cut a little hole in the middle where I can add my onion grass. And then I'm just gonna stick those stems of onion grass down into that hole right in the center of that styrofoam. And then what I'm gonna do to top it off is I'm gonna grab some of these black rocks, and I got these from Dollar Tree as well, and I'm just gonna add them right around that onion grass. And here is, are both of those tall vases, complete with all of the trimmings. Now I have seen vases like these in retail stores for as much as $40 and these are highly comparable to their quality. And I love the little accents like the stone, it just really looks right in this project. Now you would never know that these were gift boxes, let me know what you think in the comments below. take the lids of those two containers we used to make the vases earlier in this video and also a pack of these craft sticks that I got from Lowe's for 98 cents. So the first thing we're going to do, go ahead and open up those package of those jumbo craft sticks and just pull out a bunch to lay them to the side. What we're going to end up doing is placing those craft sticks on the side of the box and we're just going to lay it on the side and trace out the size on the side of the craft stick. Now these are easy to cut with a pair of heavy duty scissors. So we're just gonna cut it to size and then lay it again on the box just to make sure you got your cuts correct. Now once you do, go ahead and cut four sticks that same size and we're just gonna adhere these to the side of the box with some hot glue. 
Now you want to place two sticks on each side and that should cover the side pretty well. Now once that one side is done, flip it to the opposite side and you want to place those two sticks on that side. Now once that's done, we're just going to repeat this on that second box. Now two sides on each box are done, we can do the remaining two sides. So just take your craft stick, lay it again on top of there, and this stick will be cut a little longer because it'll be overlapping the sticks we already applied. Just trace those lines and cut them out to fit. And then again, hot glue right into place. Now you do want to repeat this process until that side is done and all of the sides are done on all of the two tops. And now all of the wood is on all of our four tops of our containers. So I wanted to paint the containers and being that these will have trinkets in and out of them all the time, I am going to paint all the exposed parts that are red with this black acrylic paint. I like to start on the outside and then I'm going to go ahead and paint the entire inside of the container. Now once that's done, you want to make sure it dries and give it a second coat. Now once both containers are fully dry, you want to paint the bottom edge. Now if you do have a slight edge showing, go ahead and run along with that with a fine paintbrush. And now all our painting is nice and dry. So to make sure that that paint is nice and protected, I'm going to apply a coat of this matte Mod Podge that I picked up from Dollar Tree. And I want to apply this on all of the areas that I painted. Now you want to be careful that you don't get it on the wood because we, we will be staining that wood later. Now you do want to make sure you get a nice good coat on the inside and outside of those painted areas. And then repeat this for your second box. And now that they're all dry, we're going to go ahead and stain them again with the same stain, that Jacobian by Minwax. And we're just going to apply a layer of that stain on all of the wood areas of my two containers. Now you want to make sure you get that very top edge of that craft stick as well. And once both containers are nice and covered, we can move on to the next step. So when it's slightly dried, I went ahead and, and put on the bottom just like we did for the first containers. I just added that foam bottom to them to finish them off. And then I just cut and trim them off. And then now we have two areas that are nice and covered and then I let them remain and sit out and dry. So now that they are fully dry, we can go ahead and decorate our containers. Now I'm just going to add some greenery and candles to mine. I think they would look super cute that way, but you could also add some of those rocks and succulents as well. And that would be adorable. So here is what I went with. I went with the candles and they are decorated with all of that greenery. Now, of course, these are for display only. So be sure to use battery operated candles if you want a lighted effect. Now, I can't believe how awesome these box lids turned out. They really look high end. Now here is the inspiration photo for this project. Now this piece caught my eye with that weathered enamel look and I knew that I would be able to use some recent finds at the Dollar Tree to help me recreate this ensemble. So I gathered up my supplies and drafted a plan to make it come to life. Now for this project we'll need three of these large harvest boxes from the Dollar Tree. We'll need one over the door rack from the Dollar Tree. We'll also need two of the 1 by 2 by 8 feet long wood pieces from the Home Depot for $1.18 each. And here is a cut piece just to show you how it looks. Now you can also use the 5 gallon paint sticks if you want. And you will need about 4 packs at about $0.98 cents each. But you'll have to piece them together. 
Now the first thing we're going to do is cut the wood down to size. Now two pieces are going to be cut to 32 and a half inches and four pieces are going to be cut at 11 inches. Now if you don't have a means to cut the wood, the Home Depot will do this for you at no charge. So now we can prepare our pieces for stain and gather up our supplies. Now I will be using my Jacobian stain by Mimwax, but you can also use antiquing wax or even diluted acrylic paint to achieve a similar look. So now we're going to be applying the stain all over the pieces, including the sides and the ends, and we want to make sure we get it covered and nice and well. Now once they are all stained, what we want to do is sit them out in low humidity to dry. So now we can start working on our boxes. So we will start by making a diagonal cut on each narrow side of the box. So let's just get that ribbon out of the way first. Now to make our cut, we're going to measure down three and a quarter inches from the top and we want to make a mark. And then I'm just going to take my ruler and I'm going to line it up from that mark up to the opposite top corner and mark that line. Now I'm going to repeat this on the other side as well. So now we're going to make a line across the front and we would just want to join that three and a quarter mark that we made on the sides and we want to make a line right across the front. Now once all three boxes are marked, we can cut them out. We're just gonna take the ruler, we're gonna line it up along the line that we drew. We're gonna place a clamp into place and this will help make a nice straight line when we're cutting. And we can use an X-Acto knife or sharp utility knife along that line. And this is how one box is cut and we're just going to repeat this for our other boxes. And so now that all the boxes are cut, all you have to do is take a bit of sandpaper and smooth out any of the rough edges. Now in order to hang our boxes, we'll be using this hanging rack and we're going to cut it apart using two hooks per box. We're just going to take a pair of wire clippers and I'm going to cut the two cross wires separating it into three sets of two hooks. Now two of the sets will have this over the door hook, so to remove it, all you have to do is wiggle it back and forth a few times with your pliers and it should break off. And now these pieces are ready to use in our project. Now in order to make sure that all my boxes will hang evenly, I'm going to mark two inches down from the hook. So I'm just going to take something with a straight edge and align our hook and I want to make a mark two inches down from the very top. Now this line will align with the top of our boxes. And we just want to repeat that for the rest of the hooks. And now we can apply our hooks to the backs of the boxes. So I'm just going to take my ruler and I'm going to mark the center of the box as a guide. And then I'm going to take one of the hooks and I want to check the alignment and everything lines up good. And I'm going to make a mark just to make sure I know where to place it once I put glue on there. Now to adhere these, I'll be first using E6000 and I just want to apply a thin layer on the back of that hook. And then I'm going to follow up with a bead of hot glue for that instant hold and I want to press it into place. Now when you do press this into place, it's a good idea to have some clips to hold it while it dries and that way you get a nice secure bond. And while that's secured in place, just apply a bead of hot glue along those crossbars and that adds a little bit of extra security. And then just sit them to all dry. And now that they are dry, I've removed the clamps and we are ready to paint these. Now I like this Zenser 123 spray primer since it gives awesome coverage and it dries super quick, but usually you can use a couple of layers of whatever paint that you like. 
Now, while those dry, we can work on our frame. Now, I will be using my grid mat as a guide to assemble it nice and straight. So, the two long pieces for the sides, these will be placed 7 inches apart. Now, the small pieces will be laid across those long pieces 7 and a half inches apart, and we want to make sure that we start laying them down 2 inches from the top. Now when we do lie down our small pieces, we want to make sure each end overlaps those longer pieces by about a half an inch. Now to apply these, I will be using some wood glue from the Dollar Tree. Now you can also apply a dab of hot glue if needed just to speed up the holding process because we'll be securing them with screws later. So I'm just going to do a quick double check of my measurements to make sure everything is nice and even. And then we can carefully flip that whole piece over to the back. Now I will be using these six and, and uh, these number six one and a half inch wood screws to permanently secure these together. Now with a 332 size drill bit, I'm going to drill a pilot hole for all of the screws where that crossbar is. And then I'm going to take those screws and I want to apply one screw in each one of the pilot holes. And here is the frame all secured together. And now we just sit this to the side and go grab our boxes. So our boxes are nice and dry and we can apply a top coat. Now I will be using this white acrylic paint to do this, but you can use chalk or spray paint if you like. Now I'm going to start applying it by applying a coat to the inside bottom of the box and all the inside sides of the box. And now I want to cover the outside and you, when you apply it to the outside, you just want to make sure that you're going in one straight and continuous stroke and that'll minimize any stroke marks and make the finish smooth and flawless. And once you're done, just paint all of the other boxes and sit to dry. So now that all my acrylic layers are dry, we can add our enamel accent. Now, this will be added to all of the edges of the box, and I'll be using this black acrylic paint to achieve this look. Now, I'm going to take a fine bristle brush, and I'm going to start by applying it around the opening of all of the boxes. And then I'm going to apply some random markings along the other edges and, and a few um, marks also on the front of the box. You just want to give it a nice worn and chipped look, uh, the look of weathered enamel. Now once all the boxes are nice and accented, we can paint the hooks black with that same black acrylic paint. We're just going to apply two coats and we want to let it, let it dry completely in between those two coats. And once all those hooks are dry, we're going to apply a coat of this matte Mod Podge to the hooks. And this will help prevent any chipping of the paint. Now, you can also apply a coat to the entire box as well if you like. And this will add a more protective finish to the box. Now 
Now for the labels, I'm going to use these chalkboard labels and I'll be cutting them into this oval shape I made by folding a scrap into quarters and cutting it out. Now two labels will fit on one of these large circle labels, so I'll only need two from the package and you can use black poster board if you don't have any labels. So I'm just going to start by removing those strings and then trace on that oval shape twice on each label. And then once all they are traced, you are going to just cut all of them out. Now I will be using my chalk pen to write home sweet home on my labels, but you can definitely customize it to how you like it and whatever you would like to say. Now if you don't have a chalk pen, you can also use a paint pen, a metallic sharpie, or any kind of opaque marking tool. You can even use acrylic paint if you like. And then once all my words are written, I'm just going to outline each one of the labels with a marker. I think this makes the lettering stand out more and gives it a more finished and professional look. Now to attach these, you can simply hot glue these on, but I wanted the option of changing them out as I needed. So I'll be using three sets of these magnets from the Dollar Tree and the Crafter Square. And to apply these, I'm just going to be using some hot glue. Now you can also use the Velcro dots as well if you like. Now I'm going to start by adhering one magnet to the back of each one of those labels and I'm going to use this uh, with hot glue. And then I'm going to place one of those uh, magnets on top and a label um, on the, I mean, a label on top and a magnet on the inside of the box. And you see that you can move and adjust the label however you like. You can also remove the label since there is no glue and it leaves a nice clean finish on the box. Now as a final touch, I'm going to add some of these nail heads to the front of my frame. And this is just to look like the inspiration piece. And you can also use silver tacks from the Dollar Tree to achieve this look as well if you do not have nail heads. Now this is definitely optional, but um, we're going to apply these by holding them with a needle nose plier and I'm just going to nail one tack in each end of the short pieces of this frame and here is how it will look. Now to hang these, you can just use these picture hangers from the Dollar Tree or you can just lean this against the wall. Now you can hang your containers, hang your containers on the frame now and you're ready to use this awesome piece. I mean, these are sturdy, they're easy to adjust and they're nice and come ready to use. And here you have it. You want to just place your beautiful shelf on display and you're ready for all the awesome compliments on your creation. Now I am so in love with this piece and I just can't believe I made it for under $8. Now this would make an awesome gift and would be amazing with your other decor in this style. Now I also think that this would be great for the kitchen, the office, or even for florals and greenery. Let me know in the comments how you would use this piece in your home. Now we're going to need two of these larger boxes from the Dollar Tree. Now they do have an assortment to choose from, so you can choose whichever size that you prefer. We'll need some large craft sticks from Lowe's, and these were 98 cents a pack. And we'll need four plastic tube hangers, and you can get these from Dollar Tree or Walmart. So we're going to start off, we're going to gather up all of our supplies, including our boxes and our craft sticks. Now we are going to start this project working on getting those boxes nice and secured. So what I do is I have some mailing postage tape here that I use and I'm going to just add a piece to each corner. We want to make sure that these don't split on the corners.
So now we're gonna protect our work surface and I like to finish the inside of my planter boxes. I just think it makes it look very neat and professional to have everything a solid color. So I'm using some black acrylic paint and I'm gonna paint the inside of my boxes and I wanna make sure I get around the outside edge about a half of an inch as well. So here are the both here are both of my boxes all nice and painted and now we're gonna now that they're dry we can actually start trimming the outside now I'm gonna use these craft sticks you can place them horizontally or vertically it's completely up to you I decided to go vertical for this project now well, I'm gonna start with a nice trimmed flat edge of one of those craft sticks I'm gonna lay along the top edge of the box and then take my pencil and mark the bottom edge where I will be cutting it now once you trim that off, you are going to test fit again to make sure it does fit into place. And then take some of your Sherbonder wood stick hot glue, place it on that stick, and add it to your box, making sure it's aligned with all of the edges. Now we are going to continue this all the way across. This time I'm just going to lay the stick across, mark both of the sides I need to trim off. And once I trim those off and test fit, I will hot glue that to the box as well. Now we're going to continue this process through the entire side of this box. So here is one side fully covered. Everything looks good. So we're just going to continue this all the way around. And now our box is fully covered with the sticks and it looks awesome. Now I'll just repeat this for your second box as well. And now both of our boxes are ready to go. So again, we are going to be using our Waverly Antique Wax on these boxes to bring out that nice wood grain color. I'm just going to apply it with a little cloth. I want to rub it right into that wood grain. I would just want that to shine through, just completely cover the entire box. So here is one of my boxes completed with the wax. I think the color looks amazing and I'm going to cover the entire second box as well. So you guys know I love to finish off my projects, including the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I am going to add this black foam sheet to the bottom of the box. So I'm just going to add a generous amount of hot glue to the bottom of the box and place it right on top of that foam sheet. Press it down until it's nice and secure. I'm going to do this for both of the boxes. Now once they are adhered, I'm just going to trim all of the excess off with my scissors first. And then what I'm going to do is after I trim it out, I'm going to go in with my X-Acto knife and do a fine trim around the box. Just careful not to cut the wood. Just trim off all of that excess and here is a nice finished bottom of the project. And just repeat this for the second one until both of them are complete. So now that that's done, we're going to go in and protect our painted surface inside the box with some uh, matte Mod Podge. I like to go in after this to prevent the paint from chipping because we will be adding and removing lots of items in our boxes and I don't want the paint to chip. And here are both of my boxes with their nice good coat of Mod Podge on the inside. So now while those dry, we are going to take our hangers and we are going to prepare these to make legs for our boxes. So I'm first going to cut the hanger on that long side in the center and then trim it off at the very top, removing the hanger portion and in that little hanger that may be on the inside of your piece to form this U shape. Now when we're done with all four hangers, we should have eight legs. Now we're going to take four of those legs and what we want to do is line them up really even and in order to keep them in place I'm going to add some painters tape to each side of those legs so when we trim them they all will be the same size. Now once they're nice and shaped uh, it, the right shape and they are secured into place. I'm going to take my wire clippers and I'm going to clip each end nice and even and try to get them as even as you can. You may need to make adjustments down the line but they will be very minor because you did this pre trim in advance. Now for the second set, we're going to tape them together as well, but this time I want them to be a little bit shorter. So I'm going to trim them down an inch, an inch and a half shorter than the other set. And then I'm going to trim them the same way with my wire clippers. So now we have our two complete sets. 
So now we're going to start to add them to the boxes and I am going to start with the smaller box. Now disclaimer here, this first method I think was a fail, but I am going to show it to you because I think everything is a lesson learned. So here I go. I am measuring out a distance of about two and a half inches from the bottom and placing some painter's tape on the box. So I'll know where to line the top of my leg. Now here's where the issue comes in. I just wanted to use E6000 to attach these along with hot glue. So so I said, okay, let's try E6000. So I applied E6000 to the top portion of my leg and then I tried to smooth it out. I should have known that it was just so gummy and it wouldn't work, but I continued on by adding some hot glue on top of that and placing it right on top of the box in the center. And then I went in with a skewer trying to remove some of that glue, but you know, when you start scraping glue, it just gets worse. But I kept rolling with it because I thought I could fix it on down the line and I did add my other um, other leg to the other side making sure I measured adding E6000 and glue and placing that on there as well and then I said okay I'll keep going I added the other two legs as well now it is kind of gummy so I was like I can fix it I added a layer of hot glue on the outside of the leg this time and I don't know what I was thinking it still did not look quite right but I continued with it and added that glue to each one of those legs and just sat it to the side now I did like the design of this leg, so I added those legs the same way to the larger box. Now, this time I added the legs with only the Surebonder wood stick hot glue. I was very, very pleased, no E6000 this time, and it turned out perfect. So I went ahead and finished off this project. They have the four legs that sit down loose at the uh, at the corners here. So in order to secure those together, I'm using this electrical tape that I got from the Dollar Tree. Now I cut a piece, I don't know, about three or four inches long. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to cut this in half to make a thinner strip. So once I have that half strip, I'm going to start to wrap this around those bottom two legs, just kind of securing them together. Now, what you want to do is definitely stretch this electrical tape as you wrap it. It'll be much more secure and they end up looking like little caps on the feet. Now to secure them even better, put a dab of hot glue in between those feet at the bottom and that should keep everything nice and secure into place. And here is what the little feet look like. I'm very happy with the way this turned out. So here's my little box and look, the legs are gone. <laughs> so what I did is I scraped off the legs with the paint scraper or spackle scraper and removed all the glue. It was fairly easy because the E6000 does take a long time to dry. So I scraped everything off and all the little scrapes and marks you see, we're gonna fix in the end. Now I did remove it from the legs as well using some rubbing alcohol. Now this time around, I decided to flip those legs around. I actually love this look better so I was like why not make two different ways and this time we are only using the Surebonder wood stick hot glue it's a smart move now I am using the alignment as same as before I can still see the line where I lined that previous one so I'm just gonna add those legs as shown here and the um, with the round side facing down and I'm gonna put those lining up from the middle of the box on each side And then I'm just gonna place them where they join up on one side and then the other side they meet up in the middle again. This is the pattern we're going with. So we're gonna add those other two around the edges and here is what they look like. So now you can still see some of those scrape marks and to resolve that, all we have to do is add a little bit more of that antique wax on those marks and they just blend in and disappear. I am so happy with the way that this turned out. You can hardly even tell that this was a previous fail. <laughs> So once that is done and the other one is done and they're dry, you can decorate them. And here are my two decor boxes with the different choices of the leg design and I love how they turned out. Now for these, I simply added some eucalyptus bundles and it looks so amazing with that rich color of the wood that the antique wax left. Now, whether you choose to use the pointed foot design or that round foot design, I think that they both make a fantastic choice for your decor. And of course, plants are not the only thing you can store in these boxes. You can also add some decorative fabrics and trinkets to the boxes too. 
And I think that combining all of these interesting textures really give the space character and unique appeal. Now these will go perfect with the hanging piece too, but you have to be sure to let me know how would you display these pieces in your space? Listen, I hope that you all enjoyed seeing these creations again, or for some of you, for the very first time. Now, I hope that you all are inspired to create your own home decor using the Dollar Tree gift boxes as well. Now, if you love DIYs on a budget, please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She So Craft DEE on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest for the latest news, sneak peeks, and giveaways. Now, if you like videos like these and you don't want to miss the next one, make sure you're subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below or just click on my She's So Crafty logo on your screen and make sure you hit that bell to be notified when the next DIY goes live. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time.